statement by Spresta Nation that the fight is on. She's running for the highest post in the land. Robredo wore a blue blouse accentuated with a pink ribbon. Gone is the yellow collar associated with the Liberal Party, which she serves as its chair. Robredo opens her speech by admitting it's not her intention to run and even considered going back to Comarini Sur and serve there. She also mentions about her talks with potential and rumored presidential hopefuls in an attempt to unite the opposition. May alok din silang sumanib na lang ako bilang kandidato o bilang bahagi ng kanilang administrasyon sakaling manalo sila. Ang tugon ko, hindi ito tungkol sa posisyon. Hindi tayo nakikipag-usap para makipag-transaksyon. Robredo makes her objectives clear. Ang kawalan ng maayos na pamamahala ang ugat ng ating maraming mga problema. At ito ang kailangang wakasan. And the only way to do that, she points out, is to end corruption, incompetence, and lack of compassion. In her speech, Robredo highlights her role as a mother. Ina akong nakikita ang pagdurusa ng minamahal kong bansa. Naniniwala ako ang pag-ibig na susukat hindi lang sa pagtitiis, kundi sa kahandaang lumaban. Kahit gaano kahirap para matapos na ang pagtitiis. Ang nagmamahal, kailangang ipaglaban ang minamahal. The presidential hopeful says she's aware that her campaign will be carried not by local officials but by ordinary Filipinos. Kaya tinatawag ko kayo, gisingin ang natutulog pang lakas. Tumindig kayo, tiniti ako, meron ding titindig sa tabi nyo. Robredo says she will fight until the very end and will put everything on the line. From 1% to vice president, Roberto defied the odds in 2016. Can the last man standing in the 2022 presidential race be a woman? Anjali Mario, CNN Philippines. Robredo is not running under the Liberal Party, but as an independent. However, the party's president, Senator Kiko Pangilinan, will be her running mate in the 2022 polls. Well, that's what sources told CNN Philippines just hours after Robredo made her declaration. Pangilinan was earlier nominated by his party as one of its senatorial bets. According to a media advisory from his team on Tuesday, the lawmaker was supposed to file his COC for senator on Wednesday. We now take you this to the Sofitel Harper Garden Kent in Pasay. Our Melissa Lopez joins us live for the highlights of the filing of COCs today. Mel, aside from the Vice President, who else showed up to formalize their bids for 2022? Here, it's been a very busy day here at this Harbor Garden tent of Sofitel. As many are, we saw a record number of filers of certificates of candidacy one day before the deadline. Vice President Lenny Robredo got here past 3 in the afternoon, four hours after announcing in, his, in her Quezon City office that she's throwing her hat in the presidential race. More than 50 people have filed their COC for president, but it's looking like a six-way contest to Malacanã. Robredo will run against Senator Manny Pacquiao, Manila Mayor Esco Moreno, former Senator Bongbong Marcos, Senator Ping Lacson, and Labor Leader Leody de Guzman. Robredo has yet to name her running mate, although sources say it will be Liberal Party President Senator Kiko Pangilinan. Several familiar names also filed their candidacies for senator today. There is Bayan Muna Chairman Neri Colmenares, Human Rights Lawyer Shell Jokno, former Vice President Jejomar Binay, former Defense Chief Gibo Teodoro, who filed through a representative, and incumbent Tagig Pateros Representative Alan Peter Cayetano. Meanwhile, former radio man turned businessman Carl Balita also pursues a senatorial run. Many of these big names were media shy today, including Robredo, who refused to take the stage and answer some questions. Several portalist groups also seeking a seat in Congress next year came to file their list of nominees before the Commission on Elections. Some are not new to the game, like Bayan Muna, Kabataan, and Akobikol. Others are newbies, like the MedCan portalist hoping to legalize the use of medical marijuana, Nurses United to take a stand for the quote, overworked and underpaid health professionals, and the frontliner Sparta list, which tapped newly crowned Miss World Philippines Tracy Maureen Perez for support.
Kovalec spokesman James Jimenez earlier said the tentative list of candidates for the 2022 polls will be released on October 29th. But it will not be final until after the deadline for candidate substitutions on November 15th. Back to you. Mel, how many aspired to file their candidacies for national posts and um, uh, who uh, are we expecting tomorrow? So far, Pia, we have a 57 who want to be president, 16 who want to be vice president, 92 aspirants for a senator, and nearly 200 partilist groups who want a seat in Congress. Actually, behind me, there are still some partilist groups are waiting to finish the filing of their COCs because they all came here in droves, droves today and uh, at before 5 p.m., so they have to be entertained. Uh, and we expect even more filers to troop to the Sofitel grounds tomorrow, the last day of filing. That includes our Robredo's running mate as well as the senatorial uh, slate members of Robredo, Pacquiao, Moreno, and of PDP Laban, uh, which, as we are told, include incumbent members of the Duterte cabinet. Yeah. Melissa Lopez reporting live. Now, speaking from his known bailiwick, Ilocos Norte, Bongbong Marcos said Robredo's announcement did not come as a surprise. <laughs> It does not work the other way, and they go in it in the That's good for us. Senator Ping Lakson issued a statement saying both he and his running mate, Senate President Tito Soto, have agreed not to comment about their rivals. Instead, they want to raise the level of discourse of the campaign and deal with issues rather than personalities. Manila Mayor Isco Moreno's campaign manager, Lito Banayo, said Robredo's announcement is expected under a multi-party system. Now, the latest Palsatia survey ranked Robredo in third place, sharing that spot with the Senators Grace Poe and Ping Lapson. Health Secretary Francisco Duque questions the latest studies placing the country last in COVID-19 response. Nikkei's recovery index shows the Philippines is likely to be the last among 121 economies in the world to recover from the health crisis. The recovery index assesses the infection management, vaccine rollout, and social mobility of a country. Nikkei notes less than 30% of the Philippines population is fully vaccinated, a slow pace even among ASEAN countries. Nikkei's report comes a week after the country also ranked at the bottom of Bloomberg's COVID resilience ranking out of 53 countries. They're comparing apples and oranges eh, dahil una-una, yung mga bansa na in nila, wala nang surge. Samantalang tayo, pababa pa lang. Mali yung ginagawa ng kanilang mga researcher. Unang-una, kulang ang data nila. Nakikita natin yung Nikkei at saka yung uh, Bloomberg they are all ano, business oriented. Hindi nila, hindi nila binasihan yung tiyatawag natin yung, ano, yung death. The health department adds the study was conducted at the peak of COVID Delta variant cases in September. At that time, other countries had already gotten over their surge in cases. Now, more promising signs in the fight against the coronavirus. The Food and Drug Administration gives its first emergency use approval for a COVID-19 treatment. Another dra drug is also on track to secure regulatory approval. Caroline Bonkin has the details. Just popping a couple of these pills could stop a COVID-19 infected person from being sent to the hospital. That's the promise of the drug Molnupiravir, and the initial result of trials abroad shows it's working. This 50% reduction in chance of ending up in the hospital, this reduction in mortality. That's why its maker, MSD Pharmaceutical Company, wrapped up its clinical trials worldwide. Two hospitals in Metro Manila tested the drug on 27 unvaccinated outpatients. Molnupiravir works by attaching molecules to the genetic material of the virus, stopping it from replicating. This prevents the progression of the illness. Unlike other COVID drugs on trial that focus on treating moderate to severe infection, Molnupiravir is the first drug developed for early treatment. It stops the virus from replicating on the first five days of infection.
Molnupiravir is a potential game changer. And as the virus is replicating, we can probably stop the virus, we can kill off the virus, so tuloy hindi mangailangan ng hospitalization, and you can hopefully prevent the deaths. With promising results as an early COVID treatment, Molnupiravir will be tested next as a post-exposure prophylaxis in the Philippines, a medicine to prevent the infection among those exposed to COVID patients. We will now treat the household members uh, anti with the anti-COVID drug Molnupiravir versus sugar tablet to see if uh, it will prevent them from catching the illness at all. Once approved by the US FDA, Molnupiravir's maker will apply for distribution to over 100 low to middle income countries. For now, our FDA gave four hospitals a special permit to use Molnupiravir. As an investigation on drug, hindi pa naman dumaan ito sa FDA talaga for evaluation. While most investigational COVID drugs are given compassionate special permits, the FDA gave its first emergency use approval for COVID treatment to a monoclonal antibody cocktail. Ronapriv, also known as Region Cov in the U.S., was used by former U.S. President Donald Trump. Still on trial, it can treat mild to moderate COVID infections at the early phase among age 12 and older. First 10 days of the COVID symptoms, when it is given uh, to the patient, sa swero siya dinadaan, ang um, nagiging nakita nila doon sa mga early results is that it can decrease the ano, no, yung hospitalization and death by at least 70%. Since this is still under emergency use, only the government can buy and distribute Ronapreve to hospitals. Caroline Bonkin, CNN Philippines. Coming up on Newsnight, cabinet members endorsing their political bets at an event meant for COVID-19 response. And the son of a broadcaster and senatorial aspirant is running for Congress in next year's elections. Details when we come back. Living the Ranger life isn't about showing your power or durability. It's about having the ability to push forward with inner strength to carve your own path, even when the path is not clear. Ford Ranger Raptor. Live the Ranger life. Nagsimula sa isang pangarap. Ako na po, ma'am. Ika'y tutulungang ibahin ang buhay na nakasanayan. Naka 24 months ka na sa pag-ibig. May panghulog na ako sa motor. Gagawa ng ambang para mapaghandaan ng forever. At harapin ang bukas. Ang may maaasahan. Simulan mo na ang forever mo ngayon. Fund your forever with Pag-ibig Fund. Register today! Friends, try nito. Vet-approved Nutri-Chunks in lamb flavor. Good active boost and prebiotics na pampalisto. Made with real lamb goodness. Good essential nutrients to help keep them strong. Healthy and happy. Listo, ganado sa Nutri-Chunks. Bawat patak, may sarap, may lakas, sulit. Red Horse Beer. Newsnight, where we go above and beyond the headlines. The government converts a sports and wellness arena into a mega vaccination hub in Valenzuela City. It can accommodate 3,000 people every day. But the event, supposedly about the local government's pandemic response, quickly resembled a campaign sortie. Our George Quiles has that story. <laughs> The supposed opening of a mega vaccination facility in Valenzuela City turned into an endorsement of possible candidates of the Duterte administration, with officials spending most of their time on stage saying good things about vice presidential aspirant Senator Bongo and senatorial aspirant former Public Works Secretary Mark Villar, like Health Secretary Francisco Duque. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque. 
and Metro Manila Development Authority Chairman Ben Har Abalos. National Task Force Against COVID-19 Chief Cardito Galvez admits the government's pandemic response may become a political weapon and even the opposition may take advantage of it. Definitely, uh, itong, ano, itong COVID-19 talaga mapagiging political ito because uh, definitely the opposition will make uh, will, uh, will create something na ang ating COVID uh, response natin is talagang uh, is a failure. Inibitahan lang sa si Senator Bongo because nakita natin Senator Bongo is an athlete. Actually, siya yung ano, isa sa mga ano, siya, siya yung mga nagpapropagate ng ano, ng, uh, ng tiyatawag nating sports in, uh, in, in the national uh, arena. The Philippine Constitution prohibits government officials and employees from directly or indirectly participating in electioneering and partisan political activities. But the Civil Service Commission circular exempts cabinet members and elected government officials excluding barangay officials from the rule. The official campaign season will start on February 8 for national posts and on February 25 for local positions. George Cahiles, CNN Philippines. Look now at the new additions to the growing list of aspirants for local posts here in Metro Manila. Anak Kalusugan Party List Representative Mike Defensor files his certif certificate of candidacy for mayor of Quezon City, where he once served as councillor. The staunch Ivermectin advocate will challenge incumbent Mayor Joy Belmonte, who seeks his second term. Councillor Winnie Costello also filed her COC as Defensor's running mate. The son of broadcaster and senatorial aspirant Rafi Tulfo is also entering politics. Ralph Tulfo is running for congressman of Quezon City 2nd District. His COC was filed by a representative. Ralph's mother, Jocelyn, meanwhile, is act CIS party list representative. And in Pasig City, Vice Mayor I Bern Io Bernardo is going up against incumbent Mayor Vico Soto. Bernardo filed his COC today, aiming to unseat Soto, who is seeking re-election. Now, over in the regions, more familiar faces have also formalized their election bids ahead of tomorrow's deadline for the filing of COCs. Tristan Nadalo gives us a look. The Revilla family showing full support for the congressional bid of Cavite Vice Governor Jolo Revilla in the province's 1st District. The young Revilla files his Certificate of Candidacy or COC today. Sana maparehas naman po o kahit maidikit man lang ang minimum wage dito sa lalawigan ng Cavite sa Metro Manila. At siyempre isusulong din po natin na sana magkaroon ng sariling district hospital dito sa 1st District. Meantime, Bacoor Mayor Lani Mercado will also run for Congress representing Cavite's 2nd District, while Congressman Strike Revilla swaps with his sister-in-law in Bacoor City's mayoral post. Nagkatapat-tapat at nagtulong-tulong ang kongresista, alkalde, tapos may senator pa kami, Bong Revilla. Nakita po natin yung husay, uh, yung naging asenso ng aming pong lunsod. Brian Revilla has yet to announce his plans but sources say he will run as board member. Cavite Governor John Vicremulia will not run unopposed with some independent hopefuls filing their COCs. Willing naman po kaming makibaka, makilahok sa maayos at magandang kaparaanan. Meantime, Laguna Governor Ramil Hernandez will seek a third term re-election. He will face Laguna representative and former broadcast journalist Sol Aragones. Over in Bulacan, Governor Daniel Fernando also filed the COC today. In Ilocos Norte, Sandro Marcos, the son of former Senator Bongbong Marcos, also filed the COC as first district representative. Sandro will go against incumbent Ilocos Congresswoman Ria Fariñas. A different COVID-19 approach, that's how former Tourism Secretary Ace Durano wants to introduce if elected governor of Cebu. Durano will challenge incumbent governor Gwendolyn Garcia. Tristan Odalo, CNN Philippines. 
Still ahead on Newsnight, a pink movement takes over social media after Vice President Robredo announced her presidential bid. And a Filipino sets a new Guinea's world record in skipping rope. Find out more about skipman Ryan Alonso when we return. choice ingredients na tatak magnolia at may tamang blend ng tamis asim sarap that will make it go mm. try nyo new magnolia mayo and Philippines in support of today's new presidential aspirant. Celebrities and netizens are painting social media pink. Singer Richard Poole reposted the photo asking Vice President Lenny Robredo supporters to wear pink. Many other personalities followed suit, including OPM band Moonstar88 and songwriter Jim Paredes. Some of these viral posts included the hashtag LabanLenny2022, which topped Twitter trends today. One social media user praised the new color as it shows Robredo is, quote, not a Dilawan. This is in, and that she is making her own image. This is in reference to the Liberal Party's yellow political color, which the Vice President donned in the 2016 elections. Yesterday, volunteer group Dapat Sileni tweeted a picture saying, on Thursday, we wear pink, prompting the brightly colored movement. Now, as aspirants take to the political race, another Filipino's experience in running helps him towards a different achievement, breaking a world record. Skipman Ryan Alonso recently made the highest number of double skips within 12 hours uh, in the world. The exercise refers to letting the jump rope pass below your feet twice for every jump. After making over 40,000 of these, Alonso doubled the previous record. He shared that his last participation in a marathon helped him achieve last Saturday's Guinness feat. Well, bale, around uh, four or three years ago, I joined the marathon because and that's the closest thing I can compare to what, what I did last Saturday because it's a long endurance um, uh, training or a long endurance activity. No? So I took the, the wisdom or my learnings from that marathon and then I applied it here. The 34-year-old said he has been skipping rope for about 10 years, but only took it seriously a year ago as the pandemic began. Now, in entertainment, the latest 007 just made his mark on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Daniel Craig now is a star of the iconic walkway, and it sits right next to fellow James Bond actor Roger Moore's. Craig shared his gratitude for being awarded the coveted space. I, I never thought I'd hear myself saying this, but... You know, it's an absolute honor to be walked all over in Hollywood. So, um, and and if, if, if happiness was measured by the company we keep, then me being on this pavement surrounded by all of these legends makes me a very, very, very happy man. 
The star's unveiling came just two days before the release of the English actor's final Bond film, No Time to Die, in U.S. theaters. Now, the late Marvel star Chadwick Boseman's legacy will impact college students for years to come, and a Game of Thrones star gets a musical. Here's CNN's Rick Damagella with tonight's Hollywood Minute. Chadwick Boseman's legacy lives on. Netflix and Howard University have established a $5.4 million scholarship in honor of the late actor. It will cover four years of tuition for one incoming freshman every year at Howard's College of Fine Arts, where Boseman graduated in 2000. Pleasure to meet you, Cyrano de Bergerac. You're a freak. Peter Dinklage takes to the Renaissance. The Game of Thrones star plays the title character in a new adaptation of the classic play Cyrano. This is your first look at the upcoming musical, which arrives in theaters December 31st. J Dog gives veterans an opportunity to serve once again in America's backyards. These veterans have a new mission. The reality show Operation Hidden Treasures follows J Dog junk removal and hauling, billed as the world's largest military veterans enterprise. They collect, recycle, and turn junk into needed items for families and other veterans. Operation Hidden Treasures debuts Sunday on the Discovery Channel. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. 79 days left before Christmas and that is it for now. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again at 7 for News.ph. I'm P. Altiveris for Newsnight, where we go above and beyond the headlines. This program is brought to you by This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. A breezy day, everyone. Welcome to Wholesome Meals, A Better Life. Now gather the fam and join us as we indulge in chillaxing and sweet bites in the next half hour. I'm Christine Jacobs and Dejas, and this program is brought to you by San Miguel Corporation. Now, admit it, mommies, when the temperature is too hot outside, all we want to do is just to turn on the air con, lie down, chillax, or better yet, go out and get some fresh air. Now, what's the best way for you to do that? Well, of course, share good food, enjoy hearty meals, and have a refreshing point to hunt with the whole family. So today, we'll teach you how to put together an irresistible summer treat right at home. And with that, let's begin now. And here to help us prepare, we have Chef Randy. Hi, Christine. Nice seeing you again. Oh, it's always nice having you here, Chef Randy. What about Chef? Kapag summer, uso yung mga vacations and of course, di ba yung mga out of towns. But now that we have this new normal, we actually have to stay home. And this is for our safety. Pero Chef, we can still enjoy summer by preparing summer treats kahit nasa bahay lang tayo. Our first dessert is inspired by a new flavor from Magnolia Gold Label Ice Cream. We have the Choco Peanut Butter Ice Cream Truffles made with Magnolia Gold Label Choco Peanut Butter. Magnolia Gold Label Choco Peanut Butter Ice Cream is made with your favorite Skippy Peanut Butter. And we also have the S'mores and Fudge Bar Skewers made extra special with the newest flavor of Magnolia Gold Label Ice Cream S'mores. Wow, Chef, all I can say actually is wow. And I am sure my enjoy ng kids at ng buong family ang treats na ito. And Chef, I can honestly say that I cannot wait to taste all of them right now. They look amazing. And before, natin tikman yan, Chef. So tell us how you made of course, the first one, we have the choco peanut butter ice cream truffles. Now, what's the secret? When you hear chocolate truffles, parang automatic, your face will light up, diba? With our version, you'll be surprised because of the creamy goodness of choco peanut butter ice cream from Magnolia. 
You know, I loved how you transformed, Chef, an already flavorful ice cream into delicious truffles. It's something you can actually store in your ref and take out whenever you feel like having a sweet treat. So, Chef, please teach us how you made this. Sure. The ingredients you need to prepare are 12 scoops Magnolia Gold Label Ice Cream Choco Peanut Butter, 2 tablespoon chopped nuts, then for the chocolate coating, 2 cups or 320 grams chopped dark chocolate melted, and 1 third cup cooked best coconut oil. So first, combine melted chocolate and oil. Mix them well. Then set aside and store at room temperature. Next, dip ice cream scoop in chocolate mixture and then gently place on a tray. Then sprinkle with chopped nuts. Lastly, store in the freezer to keep frozen until ready to consume. And that's it. That's it? Yes, that's oh it. Oh my, this is something I can't wait to make with my kids. It looks so much fun. Such a simple, diba chef, but fun activity. Christine, I see you're eyeing on this <laughs> s'mores and fudge bar skewers. I am, chef. You know me. You know me so well. I can't hide anything from you. I'm interested with this one because I'm not used to seeing ice cream on, you know, a, on stick. a stick. Yes. Yeah. I know, once you bite into this, you'll be surprised with a burst of flavor of this dessert. Pero chef, with you, siyempre, everything is easy. Will it be easy? It looks so intimidating to me. Yes, it's uh, definitely easy. So, super dali lang niyang gawin. May kita mo naman siya. It's a quick bite. Super liit How lang. How do you get it on the stick? So, first, you, all you have to do is make the fudge. Okay. Then, make a sandwich out of it. Mm -hmm. okay? Using your Magnolia Gold Label Ice Cream S'mores. Then, you put it on a skewer, or first you can chop it up, put it on a skewer, and lightly torch your marshmallow, and that's it. Now, without breaking a sweat, Diba Chef, you now have this yummy and delicious summer treat ready for the whole family. Uh, try this first, the chocolate peanut butter ice cream truffle. Yeah, let's try Go. this. Mm. It has a bite. Oh my, this is so, so good. Thank you. Look at your face. You know it's good, yes. right? This is, this is mine. We already know that chocolate and peanut butter is an amazing combination. That is true. And now you can actually get them, Diba Chef, exclusively brought to you by Magnolia. And of course, we have the s'mores and fudge bar skewers made special with Magnolia Gold Label Ice Cream S'mores. Okay, I'm going to try that. Okay, here we go. So the fudge is different from the chocolate coating of our truffles. So this one is a little bit on the chewy so side, right? So many textures here, Chef. You know, you have that soft and chewy marshmallow. And of course, it's also a little bit crunchy now because... RBN Radio Philippines Network. Radio Ronda. DCRL Batak. Member. Kapisana ng mga broadcaster ng Pilipinas. Aba Lito, mabuti naman at napauwi ka dito sa atin. Miss na miss ko na nga kayo may, at itong lugar natin, relaxing, tayimik at natural. Oh halika, magkape ka muna. May mark kape ka dyan ma? Aba syempre. Natural na natural talaga ang lasa ng Mark Cafe. Tuwing nagmamark Cafe ako sa Maynila, lagi kong naalala itong lugar natin. Relaxing at natural. Pati ba ako, naalala mo pag nagmamark Cafe ka? Ah, eh, magkape na lang tayo ma. Mark Cafe 5 in 1 plus 1. Ang sarap ng natural. Now available in groceries and drugstores near you. Nandito na ang pinakabago. Pinakabago. Ipinakilala ang mas pinalakas pa ang pinakabagong Doc F Mixed and Herbal Capsule. Kahit stress na ang beauty mo, mapapasmile ka pag nakainom ka ng Doc F Mixed and Herbal Capsule. Para makainom ng libre, mag-send lang ng inyong mensahe sa Facebook page, The Big C Freebies. The Big C Freebies. Para naman sa promo hotline, buy one, take one. Door-to-door -door delivery na. Free shipping pa. Mag-text sa 0967-583-1820. 0967-583-1820 Di ka dadakesa na sakit isang alubungan, itek the market corruption. 
nga magasan ti korupsyon, babayan ti transparency to gobyerno. Dato yung nga boses di Juan Election Advocacy Campaign ket babayan ti Bagnakem, da Susan Biag de Guzman, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Kurimawi Locos Norte, Mrs. Maricel Galiardo Tapon, Hong Kong, and Fasil Hawaii Ilocos Norte. RBN Radio Philippines Network Radio Ronda DCRL Faktak Member Kapisana ng mga broadcaster ng Pilipinas People worldwide are living longer thanks to more people embracing healthier lifestyle changes plus advances in medicine as well as nutrition. In our country though, the number of older people is increasing rapidly, faster than the growth of the total population. Tacking on extra years is a welcome development but not when you're riddled with chronic illnesses. Genetics can play a factor to living longer lives but keeping healthy at any age is up to you. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez and you're watching MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. We're here to build a healthier future for you. Aging comes with health challenges. By being aware of these conditions and taking the appropriate steps, we can avoid getting sick as we age. To help us with today's discussion, let's welcome Dr. Lourdes Carolina Dumlao. She's a geriatrician at St. Luke's Medical Center and the president of the Philippine Society of Geriatrics and Gerontology. Also with us is Dr. Karen Estepa Garcia. She's a family and community medicine specialist at Manila Doctors Hospital and UPPGH. Dr. Sandy, what happens to our bodies when we age? So we know that biologic age is basically your chronologic age. It's how old you are based mm -hmm. on what year you were born and the number of years that you've been alive. But when we say aging, it can also happen on several levels because <laughs> if you compare... Uh, let's say a 91-year-old versus a 65-year-old, you may actually see that the 65-year-old is less active, more frail than a 91-year-old who can still manage to dance, uh, get up and leave the house all by herself. Now, Dr. Sandy, first, let's go over what cellular aging is. It's actually the progressive decline of your body's resistance to stress and other cellular damages. So, we know that we're made up of different cells, and these cells have a programmed cell death. Now, they can't divide indefinitely. They can't function forever. So at some point, it will either turn off, which is what we call cell senescence, or they die, which we call apoptosis, mm -hmm. or they can become abnormal, like what happens in cancer. So this is what we term as cell cellular aging. Now, other theories like hormonal aging is the ability of our hypothalamus to regular, regulate hormones in the body. The hypothalamus is a part of our brain that regulates a lot of the body processes, no? like our heart rates and blood pressures, temperature, fluid and electrolyte balance, including your thirst. It regulates appetite and your body weight. It uh, regulates secretions in your stomach and intestines mm -hmm. and even your sleep. Hormones play a huge role in aging, especially during childhood when they help build bones and muscles uh, for that matter. And they also facilitate the development of secondary male or female characteristics. Now, Dr. Karen, is this where menopause for women and andropause for men come in? At this point in time, wherein menopause happens during aging and andropause happens in aging for males. So menopause, uh, there are a lot of changes that occurs here for the female and it's actually one factor that determines the aging process, especially if there is already low estrogen in the blood okay, of, of uh, female or other our older adult patients. Aging caused by accumulative damage to mind is about the external factors that build up over time. So this is your exposure to toxins, pollutions, unhealthy food. Now, Dr. Karen, what happens to the body over time when exposed to these? 
when we are exposed to these unhealthy toxins and also our health condition actually declines, it actually increases uh, the chance for a rapid increase in aging. Okay, So these are some um, measures that we want to be controlled while we are young, but um, we this ex this happens when we get older. That the effect of that exposure to that toxins. Mm -hmm. Now, Doc Sandy, what about metabolic aging? Naman, explain this for uh, to our viewers, please. Metabolic aging is just the basal metabolic rate, no, or how many calories your bodies burn at rest. So you will notice that at, as you age your body is able to burn calories less efficiently so that even if you're eating less, you can still gain weight. And so we see that this slows down as uh, people age. So the less active, uh, the lower the basal metabolic rate, then they also lose muscle mass. So it turns into fat. Aging for men as well as women can be an entirely different experience. Dr. Karen, tell us someone about this one. The uh, factor that I would probably consider as important here are in relation to hormones. These are biologic factors wherein um, as women start to menopause or during the peri perimenopausal period, the levels of estrogen lowers down and increases the uh, aging process, while that of men a testosterone level is still increasing and it actually slows down the aging. So there are also studies that will tell us, Dr. Fred, that, uh, you know, um, men increases their inflammation okay, at, as they get older. So it increases their chance of developing diseases as they mm. get older. So uh, what kind of mindset should we have when we do approach uh, uh, the latter years? So what I often tell my patients actually the only people who don't grow old are those that died young. So, like you said, aging is inevitable. But I don't want people to think of it as aging being a negative thing. Because since aging is a natural process of life, then we want to be able to embrace it and be prepared for it. So I always encourage my patients to be active, to make plans. Now, just because you are turning 60, which people here in the Philippines anticipate a lot because they officially become senior citizens, doesn't mean that you are limited in the number of activities that you can do. A lot of people will say that once they turn 60, their lives will change. But this is really a mindset. No? It's not a given. Now, it's one thing to see gray hairs, wrinkles, but as we grow older, they become apparent in the way we feel. Now, in addition to our outside appearance, changes do happen in the inside. We'll talk about this more when we return. We're your connection to healthcare. You're watching MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. RBN Radio Philippines Network. Radio Ronda DCRL Batak Member Kapisana ng mga broadcaster ng Pilipinas Parmiken ti Corruption Vote wisely for 2022 election Dato ya boses ni Juan Advocacy Campaign Ket babayan ti Pagnakem Da Honorable Presente Garcia Municipal Mayor Burgos Silocos Norte Honorable Leia Rosales Buduan Sangguniang Bayan Member Hawaii Ilocos Norte Education 101, Ket Babayan Timbagnakem, the Schools Division of Ilocos Norte. 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 Babayan Timbagnakem, the Schools Do kinapintas ti serbisyo ti pagsusaritan kadagit ti minatay. Eksperto ti Crispin and Susing Funeral Homes. Babayan ti dekalidad na laka ken personalized funeral services. Manipod panakabalsamar, panakaornos ti mansayag, aginga ti panakaidulin ti minatay. Daita ti serbisyo ti Crispin and Susing Funeral Homes. Masarakan ti Barangay 1 and Ricarte, City of Batakilocos Norte 
Dayan Lang, Tiricarte Park. Wengo tumawag, it is 0995-951-1711. Wengo 0961-663-9970. Let us lend a helping hand through personalized funeral services. Crispin and Susing Funeral Homes. Crispin and Susing Funeral Homes can agaw awaten the press service in cash or installment basis. Para tayo dalung informasyon, tumawag lang iti 0-9-9-5-9-5-1-7-1-1-0-9-4-7-8-0-8-2-9. Kapag rarakit pa pagkatapos ng trabaho, dapat matibay. Kapag walang pahinga mula umaga hanggang gabi, dapat matibay. Kumakayon para sa buong pamilya. Di pwedeng magkasakit. Dapat matibay. Kaya, ang kapeng iinumin, dapat pang matibay. Mixed in Herbal Coffee. Iwas sakit, iwas absent. Mixed in Herbal Coffee. My energy for the whole day. Mixed in Herbal Coffee. Kapeng pang matibay. Para makainom ng libre, mag-send lang ng inyong mensahe sa Facebook page, The Big C Freebies. The Big C Freebies. The Big C Freebies. Para naman sa promo hotline, buy one, take one. Door-to-door delivery na. Free shipping pa. Mag-text sa 0-9-6-7-5-8-3-1-8-2-0. The Education 101, Ket Baben Timbag Nakem, the Schools Division of Ilocos Norte. Baben Timbag Nakem, the Schools Division of Ilocos Norte. Baben Timbag Nakem, the Schools Division of Ilocos Norte. From blurry vision to brittle bones, a number of health conditions can show up as we age. And we have to be wary of these so we can stay healthier longer. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez and you're watching MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. We're together in health. Dr. Sandy, what are the common health conditions associated with aging? So the most common changes in aging are usually hearing and visual changes, uh, osteoporosis and osteoarthritis. Older patients are also more prone to developing depression, dementia. And of course, there's already the complications of chronic medical conditions like diabetes, hypertension. Mm -hmm. And I think the most important is when they reach older, we have what we call geriatric syndromes. And these are complex um, groups of symptoms or diseases that um, may have significant impact in the functionality and lifestyle of older patients. I want to talk about bones for that matter because healthy bones are critical to senior health. And as we age, our bodies begin to absorb old bone tissue faster than it can create new ones. And this means that our bones tend to become thinner and weaker. And this leads to a condition known as osteoporosis. Dr. Karen, is this something that can be prevented? So uh, what are the measures that can help us prevent um, osteoporosis? So as we get older, our bones tend to shrink in size and density. So we tell our patients to increase their calcium intake. There is a recommended allowance of um, daily calcium intake for older adults. And uh, this is around 1,200 milligrams per day. And also to increase, get uh, adequate amounts of vitamin D, either sa sunlight, true sunlight, or there are also sources in our diet that helps, gives a so- good source of vitamin D. Your fish, your eggs, your mga vitamin D supplements. And also um, include, you know, increase physical activity. Dr. Sandy, Let's talk about my vision problems na matumatanda. Uh, what are the common ones and can these be prevented? The most common one would probably be cataracts. No? We know mm-hmm. that there is uh, anatomical changes in the eyes as you change. Some of the structural changes include muscle atrophy, so your eyelids can become thinner. Uh, that's why they tend to droop. When you look at older people, it's like their eyes are one-third uh, closed. 
There's also dryness in the eyes, uh, but in spite of the dryness, they can have tears falling out because there's less effective draining in the ducts as because they narrow as you age, uh, in spite of the decrease in tears production. No? The whitish portion of your eyes, which we call the conjunctiva, may also turn yellow as you age. Those are usually cholesterol deposits. Uh, the pupils, which are the part of your eyes that contract when there is bright light, also becomes more sluggish. And that's why as you age, you notice that uh, you are more susceptible to bright lights and night vision becomes poorer because the ability of your eyes to accommodate light becomes slower. What can seniors do or, or those who are getting older, how can they address any hearing concerns that they, that they may have? So there's also really age-related hearing loss, which we call presbycusis. No? Again, anatomical changes because the muscles in the ear atrophy as we age. And and the most common is high frequency sounds will decrease. It can be hard for them to distinguish conversational speech. One of the most important things is actually older patients should be recognized as possibly having hearing impairments. So people talking to them should recognize this and try not to speak over and above background noise. Age-related memory loss causes one to be forgetful and can become confused with tasks like paying the bills or following directions. Dr. Karen, can this affect everyone? Yes, it can affect um, older adults, but as to the timing of it happening is something that is we cannot yet predict. Okay? So it's something that uh, might happen as early on or later in their life. Are there uh, things, uh, Dr. Karen, that people can yes. do to hopefully prevent this? Just as the body needs physical activity, so does our, you know, we also need to stimulate our brain in order to prevent the uh, cognitive decline that can occur as we get older, okay? So what I tell my patients is to, and you know, involve yourself in uh, exercises for uh, brain exercises. These are mind game exercises to help stimulate. Now, arthritis is another common condition that can happen as we age. Now, Dr. Sandy, is this inevitable as people grow older? Uh, can this be prevented? How is this treated? Actually, osteoarthritis is not inevitable. No? This is also what we call wear and tear on the bones. So there are certain predisposing factors that can lead to osteoarthritis, namely uh, activity in early portions of life. So you will notice that patients who are very active in weight-bearing sports like running can develop osteoarthritis earlier on than patients who were not involved in those types of sports. Patients who are heavy will also develop osteoarthritis earlier. Some patients will not develop osteoarthritis at all, especially if they are uh, relatively lighter in weight and uh, remain moderately active throughout their lifetime. As we age, our heart works harder to pump blood throughout our body. Dr. Sandy, can you name some of the more common conditions when it comes to the heart? Hypertension is probably the leading cause of uh, heart problems. No? Uh, and hypertension is what we now consider to be a lifestyle disease. In the earlier years, I think hypertension would only occur in patients who are in their 40s or 50s. But now we even see patients who are 20s who have hypertension. And this is because of lifestyle choices like diet, sedentary mm -hmm. lifestyle, or the lack of activity. Because our immune system gets weaker as we age. For example, getting a flu might not be a cause of concern for younger people, but for seniors, there's a greater risk for complications. Dr. Karen, what can happen when they get the flu? Subtle signs like loss of appetite or they just become weak or changes in their moods okay, mm -hmm. are already subtle signs that will tell us that there is a beginning infection, flu, or probably pneumonia in our older populations. But once they also get symptoms, sometimes it really magnifies and we really need to do something about it, meaning preventive care aside eating healthy and boosting our immune system getting enough sleep is to help them maintain their vaccination status when we return we'll discuss some of the steps we can take to minimize the many challenges associated with aging your health is our mission this is med talk health talk on cnn philippines
Philippines Network Radio Ronda DGRL Batak Member Kapisanan ng mga broadcaster ng Pilipinas Fisika, Jack and Tesalon at Healthcare Consultation and Health Products at Mangigan in Tungkal Sabado oras de las 10.30 hingga nat alas 11.30 Pabayan ni eksperto di Natural Health Care ni Dr. Honey Beras Tamayo RDN Radio Philippines Network Radio Ronda DGRL Batak Member Kapisanan ng mga broadcaster ng Pilipinas Aging can't be avoided, but there are many things you can do to mitigate the environmental factors that influence this. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and you're watching MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. There are things you can do to grow older with your body and mind and let them be as healthy as they possibly can. Dr. Karen, let's talk about what some of these are. For our patient-centered, our advice of how to eat healthy, the right diet for them, how to exercise regularly, and what is the recommended exercise regimen for our older adult patients, including how to stay mentally active and uh, getting enough sleep and ensuring that they have, um, you know, the vaccinations that are supposed to be given at their specific age. Things that we can do to prevent things before they start is getting regular checkups. Uh, this is also very important uh, for the elderly and your doctor can help find problems even before they start. Dr. Sandy, what are the most important things uh, to get checked? It's so much easier to treat when we are able to prevent. Uh, it's difficult to run after diseases when they are already there, when in fact we can prevent them from happening in the first place. So even if we cannot prevent aging, we can minimize or mitigate the risks of developing diseases as you age. So one of the things I always tell patients is, go see your doctor, even if you are well. See, the mindset of the Filipino is they only see doctors when they are sick. Dr. Karen, what kind of food should we be eating? Foods that lots of nutrient with less calories. And this would include your fruits and vegetables. Choose different types. The, the more colorful it is, the better. Whole grains like cereals, oatmeal, and even brown rice, these are high in fiber as well. And uh, yung mga fat-free or mga low-fat uh, milk uh, that will give us good sources of vitamin D and calcium. Dr. Sandy, now that the elderly have uh, to stay at home, what are the things that they can do to protect their mental health? But we encourage families and friends of older patients to make use of technology. Almost everyone now has a cell phone. It doesn't even have to be a high-tech cell phone. So regular phone calls, uh, even if it's just to say hi, to ask if they've eaten, to ask how they're feeling, helps. Um, they don't have to do it on a daily basis for patients with a number of children or those that are living abroad. I make them make a schedule so they can do a rotational call so that at least every day there's one or two people that check up on the older patients. And Dr. Sandy, what's your advice for those who, who are becoming older and having trouble sleeping? Usually problems in sleeping is uh, what we call a sleep hygiene problem. It's really behavioral. Because old patients uh, are mostly at home now and don't have a lot of activity also, what they end up doing is taking long naps in the morning and in the afternoon. So much so that when they sleep in the evening, they're able to sleep maybe three, four hours and then they're wide awake again. But if you count the actual number of hours that they were asleep, it goes all the way up to eight to ten hours per day simply because they take mm -hmm. very long naps. So number one is to avoid very long naps. No. Number two is to avoid any caffeinated drinks after 3 or 4 p.m. so that it doesn't keep them awake at night. 
And three is to reduce any sort of stimulation in their bedroom. No? TVs, radios, lights. Dr. Sandy, please share with us some simple things that we can do to have a more positive outlook in life. Don't think about growing old. No? Some people obsess on their age that they dread turning 60. Again, it's just really a mindset. Just because you turn a year older every year doesn't mean that there has to be a limitation in the activities that you can do or in the things that you think you can do. Just remain active physically, socially, and mentally, and everything will follow after that. And Dr. Karen, what's your advice for our viewers? Self-care is important. They're very obsessed with the, that age that they're looking forward to. Maybe they have to be obsessed now with doing self-care. And it has to be a multidimensional approach, not only physical, mental, but also their spiritual health. So I think that's a short advice for our older adults. Thank you, geriatrician Dr. Lourdes Carolina Dumlao and family medicine specialist Dr. Karen Estepa Garcia. We want to be your partner for a lifetime of good health. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and this has been MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines.